There we are. Hello, everybody, to EWN's Meditation A Day. We're here the first Monday of the month with Master Spiritual Teacher, G.P. Walsh, myself, Lisa Berry. And I chose today's topic. We like to start off with a few little, an intro question and answer period here. Um, then we'll let G.P. guide us on a meditation or self-inquiry. And I chose grounding today. We, we hear a lot of us will say, oh, I, I just need to get grounded or I'm feeling ungrounded. And GP has had a very uh, uplifting or I would say moving around weekend as he just moved. So there can be some shifts there. And, and you know, my past couple of days have been uh, some new introductions of events. And with that, GP, I was thinking about being grounded and why we're so like, oh, we, there's a feeling like a sense like, oh, I need to be grounded because I'm not. Mm -hmm. So what is it? Do we always just get ungrounded when there's something new or different or separated from something? Like, how do we get, un how are we getting ungrounded that we know we need to be grounded? <laughs> well, it is interesting that, that we, we feel it when it happens we recognize it for what it is, and we recognize the need to come back to center, to come back to that place of, gro of, of grounding. And, and we don't always know how to do it, right? but it's actually way simpler than people realize. It, first off, you notice that there's a feeling of not being grounded. And what does that feel like, right? It's just kind of this, a, an instability, right? Uh, a, a sense of, uh, I'm not quite sure what to do, right? Um, my nervous system is kind of on alert about things. And so, but if, put aside the idea I'm not centered, I'm not grounded, and there's just a, a recognizable feeling there, right? Now, if the attention, I mean, here's the direct way to do it. <laughs> if the attention goes from the feeling of not being grounded to that which is witnessing the, that feeling, you're immediately back in center. Because that's the witnessing point that's always there. It never goes away. And when we, when we feel connected to that, it's when we have what we call the experience of being centered, being stable, being grounded, right? The, you know, the habit energy, of course, and, and the mind wants to find some condition to feel grounded in. I want to get back in my home, home, or I want, you know, to, you know, I'm in a new home, so I want to get things <clears throat> in order, so I feel, I feel grounded. <clears throat> and th that's fine. And obviously, it will, it will generate that feeling of being grounded. But the fact of being grounded is more than the feeling. Hmm. And that's what's really important to see, because we can always be chasing a feeling, right? We can always be chasing that next peak experience, that next, uh, where do I get this calm from? But if, if instead we put our attention on the, the deeper part of us, parts of us that are aware of being, whether we're calm or not calm, there's something there, right, that isn't changing. And that's the ultimate ground. If, if your attention and your sense of identity and sense of being rests there, notice that it can't be shook. <laughs> it's mm -hmm. always there. Whether I'm feeling totally, you know, nutso, or I'm just like, you know, I'm as calm as a Zen monk, there's something aware of both. Now, if you mm -hmm. notice oh. it, that never changes. I, oh, I'm glad yeah. that you brought that up. The difference, like we, we actually, I, I feel like I, I was oscillating there for a second. I really felt like, Hey, wait a second. I just jumped into the witness aspect there for a minute. I was like, Oh yeah. And then it felt very steady, but I also love that you brought up that it's even when we are in that peaceful, blissful Zen calm state that that's not it either. It's the yes. witness of it. The witness of it, which is, I mean, it's just beyond any kind of, explanation of it because it's it's neither calm nor nor frantic right it's beyond both it recognizes both and if in fact we come to to so identify with it so come home to that 
and notice that it never changes, at that point, the centering, the grounding, the stability becomes permanent. And our emotions will fluctuate less and less and less. And that calm will be more than just a, a temporary condition or a feeling based on conditions. It'll be your ultimate and, and true state. Mm. And it will reflect it in feelings of calm, feelings of non-reactivity, feelings of, of disattachment, um, which makes you wiser, more creative, and present. I'm not I don't want to say untouchable, but yes, un, unchangeable. It's the unchangeable. Well, it is un, it is unchangeable. It's imperturbable. Right? Mm -hmm. It's equanimous. Right? Whatever happens, happens. And there's this, and there's just this deep sense that says this too. <laughs> oh. This too is allowed. Right? And that's such a powerful thing to grasp. This too is allowed. Whatever comes up, whatever emotion is happening. And emotions will happen, right? But if we identify with the wave, you know, we're like we're like heading headlong towards the shore where it's going to end, right? <laughs> but if we're identified with the ocean, it's just something blowing in my hair. Mm. So with, oh, that was fun, actually. Like, that feels good. Um, <laughs> with that, before going to meditation, um, so the things that we identify as assisting us to be grounded like i might think oh i'm just gonna put the kettle on have a cup of tea i i already am <laughs> anticipating that comfort that that peace that i'm going that state that i am bringing myself to but is that is that now am i attached to the thing that i think is grounding me or is it i'm just enjoying it it's pleasurable well it, you know there's no no harm no foul right <laughs> You know, I'm not reaching. I'm not reaching for a bottle of Jack Daniels. <laughs> reaching for a, for a cup of tea. And but if if you want to take this all the way, you recognize that that it is the, the that calm, the sense of just kind of calming down, is always coming from you. It's not in the cup of tea. It's in the circumstances that are there where you give yourself permission to be calm. Ooh which doesn't mean that you deny the circumstances and you're just forever in it trying to be calm in the middle of <laughs> chaos, right? But it is, a, it is a recognition that over time deepens. And so there's less and less dependency upon circumstances and more and more just on your, the innate sense of the calmness, which is always there, which is why you can get, you know, uh, Tibetan monks living in caves, right? Just, and they're not big. If you see it, you know, we think of this cave and this big thing and there's a fire in the middle. I mean, it's little. I mean, it's smaller than this room, right? They're little bitty things, just a little cot, a little place to, little place to sleep, a little thing for making food. Um, so, and it's part of their, that, that practice of coming to detachment, right, to uh, the world. But if we can see that it, everything lies within you, so the tea doesn't make you calm, right? right. Yeah. <laughs> the calm comes from you. And in certain circumstances, we give ourselves permission to be calm. And, and if we can recognize that in other circumstances where the nervous system has to be engaged and we're very active, there can still be a sense of calm. Yes. Mm -hmm almost just to wrap that up is it so it's the permission it's the allowing and it is the humanness permission that says this is a this too the the permission yes. is actually this too it's not like i give yeah. you permission <laughs> it's the oh yes this too this is also a part of human incarnation mm -hmm. so okay ah there's more <laughs> but wait <laughs> and 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 that's the practice for everything that comes up that's human and there's no resistance to it the re well, the practice is less and less of the resistance and if you examine the resistance to it you'll find that it's just our habit energy of thinking that we'd like things to be different than they are that somehow it would be better if things were like this mm -hmm which is a denial of the way things are, 
which takes the way things are, turns them into a problem that we have to solve rather than just the reality of human existence that we can surrender to. And if you surrender to it, you, you literally become immortal. Hmm. Well, I don't know where you're going to take this meditation because now it's like, well, we're not grounding now. I don't either. <laughs> <laughs> now I feel, I, I'm, I'm feeling like um, it's to not get stuck being the wave. It's to come back to the ocean. Come back to the ocean. And it's all a matter of where your attention goes. And if, if you can approach, if you can say this too, without reticence, but from a place of loving awareness that embrace, okay, this is what human life is like. This is what you get with a human incarnation. You're gonna get, you're gonna get dark and night. You're gonna get joy and grief. You're gonna get, you're gonna get love and loss. And, and ah, this is what it is. And it is perfect in that. <laughs> because of the, the great gift is this equanimity that takes you beyond all the opposites that you can't get in any other realm. You know, be born into a heavenly realm where everything is exactly the way you want it, and you cannot attain this level of, of perfection. You, you know, to be born a human is the highest thing you could do. I mean, it means you have earned a great deal of merit <laughs> in, in past lives that such a gift has been given. That's so beautiful. It's a wonder. Yes. Hmm. Makes you almost, yeah, hmm. look, well, makes me right now want to look at all the things that I am maybe, you know, in resistance to or conflict or don't like or don't want. And I think, hmm, how could I look at this? How could I, I don't know if it's a, if it's an inquiry, but how could I accept it too? I guess that's. Yes. Yeah. And that's yeah. I mean, in the winter, the trees look like they're dead. Yeah. We don't like, I don't like that. I want to move to the equator, right? Where everything's green all the time or, but this is, this is the way life works. Mm. Let life educate. This is, that's the Tao. Let life educate you rather than insist that it conform to your wishes. <laughs> yeah. Aww. Well, with that, I will invite you to lead us on okay. whatever you choose and I'll come on back after. I I, I shall, yeah. Ah, well. Let's just be quiet for a moment. Close your eyes. Let's take in the silence. Now, if your mind is really noisy at this point, just bring your attention to your breathing. Really feel your breath. Feel it going in and out. And notice that you have no resistance whatsoever to this most fundamental aspect of human life, breathing. You have no resistance to it. Because in your heart, you know this is life. It's absolutely essential. I heard one beautiful quote. Somebody said, I, I decided that my life was always going to be about that which is really, truly important. And so I put all my attention on my breath. Such a simple thing. But to watch and notice that you have no resistance to it. It's not like you're saying, oh, this shouldn't be here. Why should I have to breathe all the time? Why should I have to eat all the time? Why should I have to bathe? all the time. We don't think about that. We just do it. This is just human life. Well, what if we were to apply that same thing to 
everything. Everything that happened in your life is obviously part and parcel of human life, isn't it? Even those things that we have learned over time, uh, been taught to believe that there was something wrong with them, something inappropriate, something that shouldn't be. And we've developed very elaborate philosophies, and religions, and spiritual perspectives, and economic and political, and philosophical perspectives to say this should be some other way. But all of those, if you look closely, are all man-made ideas. Even though they try to attribute them to some kind of supreme being to make their, their very limited perspective somehow absolute. <laughs> I, I have to chuckle at it. Because it'll, it'll be gone in a decade, maybe a hundred years tops. Empires rise and fall. Thought systems rise and fall. What doesn't rise and fall? When we look at the trees, it goes through the seasons. And in springtime, it's just so fresh. You know, we're just a couple of weeks in the northern hemisphere away from springtime. A couple of weeks away from fall in the southern hemisphere. Suddenly there's little buds on the tree. There's life just springing out of it. As it moves more into summer, it's this full bloom, full blossoming, full maturing until finally we get to fall and there's fruit. There's fruit on the trees. And throughout the summer, the bees are very <clears throat> busy in their surrogate, surrogate lover relationship. <laughs> And then that fruit, the, the bountiful harvest of fall, where it's literally falling off the tree until finally it completes. And once again, the leaves and in some parts of the world, the most glorious display of, of, of pride <laughs> and showing off, turn this colors that just make your breath stop. And then they all fall to the ground and decay. Natural cycles of life. And you, too, are part of this natural cycle of life. The beauty of the human being is we go through numerous ones. Childhood and then adolescence and young adulthood and all sorts of different times in our life where we just complete a cycle and start a new one. Now, in that sense of recognition that this is the way life is, the waves on the ocean are integral to the ocean. What would the ocean be without the sound of those waves crashing? without the, the, the enormous swells, without all the living beings in there, some jumping into the air, the whale breaching, right? <laughs> and let's take a step back and notice that all of the cycles of your life, everything you've seen, everything in nature around you, it appears to something to someone. There's something consciously aware of it. Something that's not just aware, but is in, but can get absolutely in awe of it. Now, what if you could regard every aspect of that, of your life, I don't care what it is, with that kind of wondrous awe. That life isn't like some kind of personal project or personal burden that you have to somehow make sense of, but is in fact 
simply the inevitable natural unfoldment of life as it is, as it was meant to be, and that your life is now and always has been perfect. including all the waves, the disturbances, the storms in the sky. Picture that ocean with a huge thunderstorm going on around it. Or the waves crashing. Just feeling that. And yet down at the depths of the ocean, it's motionless. Think of all of the events that have happened in your life. They're like waves on the, on, the, on the surface. Hasn't there been something, something there that has been like the depths of the ocean, that has remained unchanged, unmoved, undisturbed, as everything has come and go? gone. Notice this isn't a affirmation. I'm not planting thoughts in you. I'm just inviting you to look and see for yourself what has been here. What's been here the whole time like the storms that come and go, the ocean remains. So this is the question you take deep in your heart. Am I just the waves or the events sought and unsought in my life that happen? Or am I the ocean, the still depths where there is innumerable life forms and beings? Just take that into your heart. No need for the mind to answer. It's a question you, you sit with, you be with, so that it can unfold itself to you. And on that note, take another deep breath. And uh, ready? When you're ready, you can open your eyes and I will... Welcome, Lisa, back to center stage. <laughs> oh, beautiful. I could hear my cat take a big breath in and out when you said it. <laughs> uh, when you said about um, systems, thought systems rise and fall. Um, and if we can accept, if, not that we can accept, if we look at all the events and things that are happening I imagined an accordion file folder, you know, that has A, B, C, then the next one is D, but now it's suddenly like saying all these events you've got filed away and they mean something and they're in a place, but now we're going to do it numerically. <laughs> so they're all, they're there, <laughs> but it's a different system that we, that we're using yeah. and, and the attachment to, well, that goes into like the, the D section. Well, you're saying, no, well, it's actually just a seven. <laughs> it's like just a well, yeah. Imagine, um, imagine back, uh, in, in the day when they had to, when they went from, you know, the German Deutschmark or the Italian Lira to the Euro. Yes, yes. I mean, every, you know, I'm still buying an apple, but <laughs> 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 but the whole criteria by which I assess it is now right. out to lunch. Right? That's the thing. It's the yeah, yeah. criteria which we're assessing it by now opens it up. Yeah. To... Yeah, right, right now everything is seen through a particular lens of politics and economics and and that sort of thing. And we believe that this is the only way. Right? Yes. Just like, you know, it used to be that the aristocracy, kings and royalty and all of that, they that was the only way. That's the way the only this is the way God intended it, right? And then there was the growth of the merchant class in the Renaissance. And there's quite a conflict between the growing wealth of the merchant class. Uh, like the Medici and the aristocracy, which have which began to lose their absolute authority, and it was quite a conflict between all the, the merchants. Won. We're now in the age, the age of uh, of the merchants, and before that, it was the priests. 
you said a key word there actually authority and so yeah. would that be a helpful inquiry to do as well is who is in authority over this thought or or emotion that's arising yes we just assume that we don't have the authority there's nothing i can do about it and of course the more you fight thoughts you know the more they laugh at you <laughs> <laughs> sticking around here <laughs> yeah it's like yeah i'm i don't want any more thinking i'm gonna purge my mind of all thinking good job you really did oh look it's quiet isn't it really <laughs> <laughs> we like that one oh, yeah i really did it didn't wait a minute <laughs> <laughs> where is the where does authority the authority actually lie or, or a better way to put it for me is where where do I find my own self validation? Okay, yeah. Hold on. The authority so to say this is this is actually me. This is how I feel. This is what I'm going to stick with. This is my story, and I'm sticking to it with an authority that has conviction behind it, without having to defer to somebody else. I mean, that's what we do in the meditation here, right? Mm -hmm. bring it to a place where you're seeing it where it's like the only authority there is you somebody else can say well is this right is this what i'm should be feeling right mm -hmm. <laughs> and we defer to it and says well is this what you're feeling well, yeah well then i kind of assume that's what you should be feeling <laughs> mm -hmm. so being grounded is is self-validation it's self allowance and acceptance or and it's also just self-knowing Yes, it's it's and it's the and out of that self knowing grows a wisdom that knows the nature of things. So there's no more argument with life as it is, with all of its ups and downs. And in that, when there's no argument, there's peace. There's no conflict. Stop arguing with life. <laughs> Stop arguing with life because if you're arguing with life, you're wrong. <laughs> Simple. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> Simple. Yeah. Aww, so beautiful. Well, it's one of our nice short and sweet ones, which is perfect, but I feel that's lovely. And I just want to thank, first of all, EWN for having us be able to come here and share this and host, host us hosting um, with a meditation a day. And thank you to all the viewers who have our new ones and who have been with us for a while and who've joined and, and checked out other shows and meditations on EWN. And uh, we're here the first Monday of every month doing the meditation a day. Yes. However, on the third Monday of the month, we come back and do a little bit of tapping, do a little bit of EFT tapping for you guys. And so that's 3 p.m. Eastern. So in two weeks, we'll see you again. And um, in the meantime, if you want more of us, please visit www.gpwalsh.com and float around there, see what, what piques your interest. And uh, we're always here for comments. So thank you, everybody, so much. Thank you, GP. Thank you, Lisa, as 